maybe I could add something to that in terms of, you know, making these learnings even more clearer. That is also possible. Can I start? Yes, sure. Yes. Um, so for me, I definitely feel or see that I have much more success in my practice now than uh, compared to, to before the training. And I see that I have now some cases which I feel, yeah, this is really deep healing and this is how I want to work. And I feel more clear about how to work about homeopathy in general. So um, for me, the training was really successful, but also I feel like I'm at the beginning <laughs> and it can still be much more, much better, of course. Um, but something I feel still I'm very confused about is the differentiation between plants, plant king, kingdom and mineral kingdom, uh, animal kingdom. I often confuse this. And of course, if I have clear symptoms or I have uh, some other aspects which are clear and I can um, find a remedy through this, then it's more easy. But just to, for me to um, differentiate, is it a plant or is it an animal? I confuse it very often. Also in the paper cases from Kyle, when it was an animal, I was I had a plant, and when it was a plant, I had an animal, and I feel like somehow I I don't know I don't see really um, how I of course I mean I I have the theoretical knowledge, but in practice I I don't see it. I don't know why I yeah I don't know if you can say something about this or no definitely. But before I say something, I would like you if possible to summarize the learnings from the course so far. What, in, in what way, you, you said your practice is better, you are able to have more confidence, etc. So what are the various things that you learned here that contributed to that kind of success or learning? I think um, most of all, it's what you said you want to give us. In the beginning, you said, um, you don't want to give us so much theoretical knowledge and like this, but to, to have another view to the case and to have this kind of, um, that I see the case in a incomplete, that I see all aspects. And also that I, I'm more sure about on which level that I am when I'm in the case taking. I am now more aware of the levels and on which level I am and what I have to do with this information from each level. So I feel like before I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm a very confused person. So <laughs> it's, it's also my team, but also when I, when I was doing the case taking, I think a lot of times I was just, overwhelmed by the informations and I could not really order them and or, or made a disorder of the informations and now I feel like I have a clear structure of on which level I am and what am I doing with this kind of information how do I use this kind of information in the case analysis and do I repertory size it or is it um, something about the kingdom or yeah I don't know if this is clear enough mm -hmm. and and just to I feel that you know what for me is the biggest uh, success is that I feel more confident in in my work because in the beginning I did not even try to see the whole picture because in my mind was this thinking like it's not able to cover the whole picture. So I didn't even try to see the whole picture. And through this course, I feel that I, um, yeah, I have more trust and more confidence in, 
I can see the whole picture and I will find something which So I did not even start to go the way because I felt like it will not, I will not be able to cover it with the remedy. And now I, I have this trust and also I have this trust in the case taking. And so also in the case taking, I can just be with what the patient is saying and just take every information. And then I have the trust, I will find something which covers the issue and I will see the issue. So to summarize, you can say that you learned two or three things. One is you learned that if you see the case completely, the confidence in the remedy increases because you are able to see it from many angles. Mm -hmm. And also learned that it is possible to do this. Yeah. That because the whole state of the patient arises from one remedy state, therefore the connection is already there. We have to discover it by going deeper into all of these aspects. That is the first thing you learned. And the second thing you say you learned is to identify which level of case taking you are in and what to do with that information. If it is a local level, you have to use the repertory. If it is a sensation level, you should use the sensation and the kingdom. If it is a miasmatic level, you have to use the miasm, etc. So that is also a very useful learning. And also you must learn how to take the patient deeper into the levels from emotions to the imagination, imagination to sensation, sensation to energy. And mm -hmm. we must know how to take him deeper and use the information from all the levels. While using the information to go deeper, also use it at that level also. Because the remedy is also found in all the levels. Remedy also has emotions and imaginations and sensation and energy. So we can use all. So these are the two things that you discovered. And uh, then you came to a question. And the question is, how do I differentiate between plants and animals? Now, I will try to ask, uh, clarify your question a little bit more. Because there are certainly certain many plants that look like animals. And there can be also animals that look like plants. For example, you know, hyoscyamus, you know, it's also very sexual, jealous, competitive, etc. etc. This looks like an animal. How can you say it's a plant? Or, for example, stramonium. You can have themes of, of animals chasing you, eating you, biting you tearing you apart and you are scared and you're running. So this looks like a victim aggressor thing also. And the patients can say like that. I feel like a victim. I feel he's persecuting me, harassing me, abusing me. So there is a me versus the other person theme also. It looks like an animal. And uh, yes, you can, you can have all these things going on. You know, for example, if you take a remedy like crocus sativa, Crocus sativa is the life of the party, very animated, you know, very laughing, singing, joking, all the attention she wants. She's kissing, she's doing all kinds of wearing attractive clothes, etc. And it looks like animal qualities. You see? Like this, you can see many, for example, the remedy Lilium tigrinum. You know, it is from the lily family. And it has this whole division between sexuality and religiousness and uh, this conflict, you know, we say animals have this conflict within themselves. She has a Lilium tigrinum very prominent and she can also be very attractive, dress in very revealing clothes and do all kinds of things that look like an animal. So there's many things there, so it can get confusing. I think this is your question. Yeah. Now, let me tell you how I do it. There are two answers to this question, actually. The first, the first answer is that the differentiation between the kingdoms should be done at a very, very deep level, not superficial level. It should be done at sensation level. 
not at emotion or imagination level. If you go in Im imagination level, you will make big mistakes because somebody will say, I imagine that he's persecuting me. And you'll say, oh, this person is persecuting me and therefore it is animal. But one of the main remedies for persecution is China, which is a plant remedy. And Drosera also, which is a, also a plant. So, you see, you can't, you can't make a conclusion at that level. Then, what you have to do? You have to go to the sensation level. And at a sensation level, you have to see where is the emphasis. Now, listen very clearly. You know? Where is the emphasis? The emphasis is on a experience and a response or the emphasis is on one versus the other. Where is the emphasis? If the emphasis is one versus the other, it is animal. If it is experience and response or sensation and reaction, it is a plant. I'll give you a case which I remember very clearly even today. It was a young man, he must be about 35 years old. And he came to me for one of the worst cases of depression that I have seen. He was an IT professional. He was in information technology. He was working with Apple actually. And uh, he used to go to his work. He would come back. He had no social life. He had no girlfriends. He had no relationship. He had no family. He had never went to a shop, never went to a movie. Just came home and he was depressed. And this went on for 10 years. He had been to every kind of psychiatrist you can imagine. And finally, he came to me. When he came, he came in, you know, in a taxi to my clinic. He's from another city. He had taken a a plane and then he took a taxi and he came and he was very very scared you know he was shivering and I said what happened to you so he said you know uh, I came in a taxi I had a fight with the taxi driver about some money issue and now I am afraid that when I go out the taxi driver will collect other taxi drivers and they will all murder me I am afraid of course, this was very irrational and illogical, but that was his fear. Then I asked him, tell me a little bit about you. And he said, you know, my father died last year. And I said, oh, your father died last year. How do you feel? He said, I'm very happy. Because if he had not died, I would have killed him myself. I said, what? I've never heard this before. What happened? You know, my childhood was a terrible, terrible childhood. And uh, my father used to beat me up and uh, very, very badly. And he was a very cruel fellow. And my mother had no power in the house. And she was just a mute spectator. And I remember, you know, I used to run from room to room and he would chase me. And then he would beat me up and I had no help. And I really wished him to die. Now, which kingdom is this, Sabrina? It's the animal. Yeah. It looks like animal. So what did I ask him? Because what level is this? What level is he talking right now? About level four, the situation. Yeah. Talking about delusion. He's talking about nightmare of his life, his situation. So I asked him, what was your experience to be in this situation? And he said, you know, I would get up at night. I was so frightened. I would scream. I would run from room to room. And I was shit scared. I was terrorized. So what was his experience? His experience was of terror. His experience was not, my father is a bad man. That was a delusion level. But the experience of that situation was terror with a desire to escape. 
Which superclass is this? The sixth. Sixth. This is plant kingdom because it was a experience and a response. So the remedy he got was from the Solanaceae family, like a stramonium. But his remedy was mandragora. And it's one of the most beautiful results you can ever see. And I want, if, if people would like to see the result, you can go to the internet and there is a movie called The Other Song. And you have to put the word P S B T. I'll try to I'll try to show you what it is. So, this is the YouTube video. So, this video it was made by the government of India and it is based on sensation method. They came and did an interview of me. And they did an interview of this patient and he tells his story and you can see him and hear him. Only they don't tell you the name of the remedy which I'm telling you. It is Mandragora, Solanaceae, but you can hear this patient. And he was so happy when I asked him, Would, can you, will you come in a movie? Because this movie is on Indian television, they showed it. And he said, I'll come on any movie anywhere and you can publish my name and my address and everything. And I'm so happy with the remedy that I went and brought the plant, Mandragora, it's Mandrake it's called. And I'm growing it on my backyard. And every day I go and thank, thank you Mandragora for saving my life. So what is the difference between plant and animal? When you go to the level of experience, at the deepest level and ask him, okay, this is the situation. Somebody abused you, somebody persecuted you, somebody hit you, right? What is your experience? And if he says, my experience is, how can he do this to me? I will finish him, I will kill him. And he thinks he's strong, I am weak, he can do this. So the whole I versus you is the experience, then it is animal. But if he says, my experience is fear and terror, Error and I have to escape response. This is plant. This is the basic difference. But still, I tell you, it can be difficult, but this is the way to do it. Okay, Sabrina. Give it a thought. See in your cases. It's only when you go to the deepest level you can differentiate. At a superficial level, you will make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Suppose somebody is saying, I'm very, very sensitive. You can't say this is plant. It may be mineral. A netramore person is sensitive to being betrayed or disappointed. But what is the main feeling of netramore? I depend on you so much and you let me down. This feeling, I depend on you, is the basic experience of netramore. That feeling is mineral. I need you. I am missing something which you are going to give me. If this is the basic experience, then it is mineral. So we cannot go superficially. Sensitive means plant. Competition means animal. Um, something else means, you know, minerals. You can't do like this. You have to go to the deepest level and ask the experience. And this is where the wise processes are very useful. Because the wise process take you directly there without the story. So what will happen? Suppose this patient, Mandragora, I gave him a wise posture like this. Tell me what happens to you. He'll say, oh my God, it's all coming. Ah! He will go straight to the plant. 
because there is no father, no mother, nothing in this story. It is direct to the sensation. And that's why wise processes are really uh, very, very authentic. Very authentic. And it bypasses your whole story and takes you straight to the experience. So I sincerely urge all of you to learn wise processes. Did it really make things simple or not so simple? Also a good question to all of you. Did it make it more complicated or make it simple, really? Did it fulfill its title? What do you feel? I had a case this week, a lady with um, hormonal problem and um, with repertorization and everything. I landed with pulsatilla, not more, and um, sepia, for example. And earlier, um, I would have read each materia medica up and down and what is it more. And now after this course, I was very, very sure this is sepia because I have more um, more tools. I can use much more of the information I get. I don't have just a story that this lady is saying that um, she had this big fear at school not to, you, you know, not to show up. She didn't want to be seen there. And there were more topics of um, sepia. You know, in the end, I was very sure that this is the right remedy. And this is much more fun now to to work because before I, I was always like, there is this saying that um, if your remedy is right, then there may be a blockade or something. And I was always like, how can I be so sure? But now I see that I come in this direction that I'm very sure like this Argentum nitricum today, I heard this um, fifth, fifth line so well with the um, innovation, with the performance and everything. And yeah, it is really, it is easier, yeah. I was, it's much, much shorter to come to the point it's sepia and I'm sure because, and I have reasons for it. So yeah. when you say that I don't want to be seen, she said, I don't want to be seen, correct? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Um, she, I don't know this English word, but she, um, she was like, she, didn't want to appear there because both her parents were teachers in the two schools she made and she just didn't want to show up anywhere and she was also talking about diving somewhere and um, yeah I could hear this um, this topic that I it led me to Sepia in the end and yeah. yeah yeah so very good wonderful but I would like to add something to it you know, when somebody says, I don't want to be seen, for example, no, not your case, any case. So what we need to do is to go deeper into that. And what do you mean by I don't want to be seen? And then you have to be very careful where the person is going. Now, it's very possible that this could be a mollusk, which says, you know, let me go into a shell and nobody should approach me or it's dangerous outside. Mm -hmm. you know? could be a mollusk, it could be sepia, it could also be the idea of camouflage. That's when what I you... heard, camouflage, exactly, yeah. Camouflage. And I would very highly recommend for all of you this movie that has just come, very, very beautiful movie. Uh, My Octopus Teacher. I don't know if you have seen this movie, but I highly recommend. Have you seen Sabrina? Um, no, it's on my list of the most wanted movies to see. Yeah, yes. because I have seen the I have seen the trailer and it looks very beautiful. Yeah, the Octopus Teacher. This is the name of the movie. It is the story of a love affair between a man and an octopus. It's actually very romantic, this whole movie. They fall in love with each other and all of that story, very beautiful. But uh, octopus and sepia are very similar. They are from the same group of mollusks called the cephalopods. And one of the main themes of cephalopod is one is locomotion, that means movement. And secondly is camouflage. 
and octopus and sepia and especially octopus can take any shape form or color it can look like a rock it can look like a leaf it can look like anything 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 and it's the most amazing transformation that can happen in the course of seconds and then suddenly it is not there it's not seen if you understand what i mean so when a patient says i don't want to be seen you have to ask is this like a camouflage that she wants to be there and not to be seen or could it be that she want to hide that can be a solenesy feature from fear they want to hide it can be a bival feature it can be a baraita kaap feature where they feel so inferior and so incapable that they don't want anybody to see them it can be also ambra grisia which has got lot of embarrassment so there are many many possibilities i am only mentioning four so what i am trying to say is that any quality any feature has to be investigated and to see what other uh, collateral symptoms or features are available to define i am i don't want to be seen is it embarrassment is it incapability is it uh, camouflage is it going into a shell also many uh, remedies like lithium beryllium and boron they don't want to be seen they want to be inside the mother's womb they don't want the outer world at all they don't want to face the outer world these people can go into manic depressive psychosis where they simply shut the world off lithium is a very good remedy for this kind of bipolar disorder so you see we have to be very very um specific refined in our understanding it's 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 so beautiful that if you do this in the right way and not jump to conclusion don't take one thing and jump explore and just see what is around it what are the other features it it is a great adventure i tell you practice is a great adventure you don't need to go to any movie or any holiday or nothing just sit in your practice your adventure is right there but you have to explore you have to have the spirit of adventure and not the spirit of classifying you know put it here put it there that is also what francois was saying that you have to allow the universe in a meditative state just pure listening to take you there and if you develop this quality of pure listening your life will change not only your practice because the thing we never do is pure listening i want to explain to you a little bit more yesterday we did a process in the wise webinar called relationships so what i did i asked them to make a paper and put five columns first column is observation second column conclusion third column is reaction fourth column is experience fifth column is pure listening so the idea was i put the photograph of donald trump and i said first you write down everything you observe he has a red tie he is fat he has got golden hair just only objective no conclusion second column put your conclusion he is arrogant he is rude he is mean he is idiot he is narcissistic whatever you want to say say about him then third column what is your reaction okay he is arrogant and mean how do you react so you will say i feel small i feel inferior i feel insulted i feel whatever then take that word small take it out of context and just put your imagination how does small feel oh i feel like this i feel like that go there that is your experience okay then stop that and just start listening to trump purely what does he say make america great again america first it's big it's big it's big he says that all the time then you will see that your experience and what he is saying are totally they have no connection you have created your own trump inside your own head and that trump is you not him 
the outside trump is only make america great again big 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 america first this that i am the biggest i am the best that's all he's saying nothing more than that from that you made your own construct of trump according to your pattern not his pattern you see and that's how we mess up our relationships we mess up our relationship because we don't listen to anybody we only react only react oh what he did to me he shouted at me i feel small i want to kill him my god he is nothing to do with you with him it has to do with you if you can become aware of that then you will start listening to what the other one is actually saying and start seeing the world from their point of view which has nothing to do with your reaction to them they are not that that is you so this quality of pure listening which you develop in the homeopathic clinic will help you immensely in life immensely this is the reason why i have no bad relations with anybody in this planet nobody i have no bad feelings or bad relation with anyone because anything bad i feel about anybody is me it's coming from my pattern so can i look into can i use this opportunity when i somebody does something harmful to me and people do it no no doubt about it but when they do something harmful can i use this as an opportunity to look and examine my own pattern and from that place i can heal therefore the people who abuse you the most are the biggest gifts sent in your direction the people who make you feel comfortable are your greatest enemies they don't let you see your own pattern you are so happy with them that you never look at yourself but the people who stab you who hit you who do bad things to you they give you the chance to see what comes up and heal it and from that place of healing you are able to listen to the other one and then a true relationship can happen not a relationship between your pattern and their pattern but a relationship of the soul which is deeper than both your patterns those souls can connect in spite of the patterns and the, those souls can help each other heal and not from a position of i react to you and you react to me and i gave you this and what did you do for me etc etc but from a position of we are both co travelers in the journey of life can we help each other complete ourselves not that i complete you and you complete me but can we help each other complete ourselves that is a good relationship you see and uh, so this is what we were talking about so the main quality is of pure listening and that's what we need to develop in our homeopathic practice so for me homeopathy is not just a profession or a skill or a technique it's the deepest philosophy of life itself it's the way i live the way i perceive the world that there is nobody other than you whatever you see of the other person is you use that to become aware awareness is healing awareness is healing you don't have to do anything you don't have to think positive or go and love everybody you know some people say go and love your enemy i say please don't do that not a good idea at all because you are forcing yourself to do, <laughs> do something you know how these two enemy politicians they shake their hand do you have you seen it in the in the news how they look their expression hmm and then they take the hand like that <laughs> it is it is all forced it's not going to last very long only healing can last and we can heal ourselves and um, i tell you again use any means to look at yourself the wise processes are very very powerful try to see if you can you can do them and uh, what i'm trying to say is that only a healed you can really be of use to the world more and more use to the world so the best gift you can give to the universe is a healthier you this is what i truly believe and when you get healthier 
a certain you know um, the the aroma of health spreads around you and people feel you know less and confrontational and it there's a sense of ease wherever you go wherever you go there is a sense of ease all around you there's no conflict life is good so all these are parts of homeopathy that's where homeopathy takes us you know it takes us from disease to ease and how through the process of awareness awareness how by the process of similimum by looking at by becoming uh, seeing the mirror of your own pattern the remedy is the mirror is the mirror of your pattern and this mirror can happen without a remedy also so the philosophy is like this it can happen through music I don't know any of you have downloaded the Raga Therapy app. Can I write write it for you? Raga Therapy app, and this is found in both App Store and in Play Store, and you can download it. It is for free. There is a R symbol on it. One R, Raga Therapy, and. It, i devised this app on the basis of indian classical music identified 25 melodies which are called ragas and did extensive proving maybe some of you were in the proving also i think who was there cc you were there na who was there in the raga therapy proving anybody of you no yes i was there I was there Well, you first were was there. Yes, you were there. Okay, very good. So we conducted this provings over twenty-five ragas, and made an algorithm of the expressions, and created this app. So that if you put in all the right emotions and sensations you feel, it will tell you which raga is good for you. And I will sing that raga for you for fifteen to eighteen minutes. and uh, you see what is the effect on you and you can report back to me also i would welcome your feedback any feedback any questions you have i'll give you my the email you can write to info at sankarans clinic dot com you are welcome to ask anything you like on this email and so these are the things you know i it, there is a deeper philosophy involved and that philosophy takes you straight on the path of spirituality because homeopathy is very close to spirituality in the ninth paragraph of organon hanuman wrote in the healthy condition of man the spirit like dynamis the spiritual vital force that animates this being rules with unbounded sway so that the indwelling reason gifted spirit can employ this living healthy instrument for the higher purposes of our existence so what is hanuman writing <clears throat> that health itself symbolizes freedom freedom to who not freedom to us freedom to the universal spirit to use us as its instrument for whatever purposes it has created us for this is the essence of hanuman's philosophy spirituality he was a deeply spiritual person even though a german but very deeply spiritual <laughs> and therefore you see he wrote these words and uh, when he died you know on his tombstone you know what he asked them to write anybody knows 
what is inscribed on his tomb stone a inutilis vici non inutilis vici which means i have not lived in vain and what does this mean it means i spent my earthly journey in serving the purpose for which i came here that's what he means it is not an egoistical statement it is a statement that is made by a deeply spiritual person who says i am here to fulfill a purpose and i fulfilled the purpose i came for i have not lived in vain and can we you know in our own lives live in such a way that we can write that on our tombstone that i didn't waste my time here i lived that i contributed i gave whatever i could in my potential so that other people could benefit so i fulfilled the higher purposes of my existence i didn't just come here to eat sleep enjoy and make money and go this is what he meant and how how peaceful he must have felt in the last days of his life or the moment of his death to know what a beautiful divine system that he has created and what truths he discovered in his life and can we also emulate that spirit of hanuman and see before we go what can we do this is what we have to think about that is the way i live i live in such a way asking myself this question on the day of my death am i going to be happy with what i have done today how i have utilized this day and if i feel yes then i will do it if not i will not do it as simple as that sorry for a long sermon i will anybody else would like to add what you learned from this course you know when you say then i can say more that's what i mean um, just one short thing next time when you come to europe i will show you some places with spiritual people Hanuman is not the only German who is spiritual. <laughs> We have some of them, at least some of them. <laughs> I was just trying to provoke you, Sabrina. <laughs> of course, spiritual people are all over the world, in all communities, in all countries, and they often don't show themselves even. i met one of the most spiritual people in the world in switzerland his name was dr joost quinsley von fimmelsberg in st gallen i don't know he was a very spiritual man if you go in his presence you will feel so much silence you know he was such a humble man that when i met him when he was 82 years old just maybe 1 2 years before he died he said well 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 doc shankar ram i have practiced homeopathy for 50 years and i think i am beginning to get the idea this is what he told me can you imagine his humility when i went in st gallen the first time i was 26 years old and he came to my lecture and sat there for the whole day listening to me he was 80 years old what must be his humility this is he inspires me and i wrote to him a mail i said a, a letter i said dr quintley i hope that in this lifetime i develop a fraction of your quality this is what i wrote to him so yes sabrina there are spiritual people everywhere i was just joking Yes, I hope in life you are on the <laughs> channel. Is <laughs> good. I'm so fulfilled from this course as as well as from the wise process, and I'm really 
looking forward to the time where I can de digest it step by step and really give into the For me, it was a really wonderful journey. First of all, the experience of my pattern, my pattern to see it in myself with all the experiences in it, the sensation and, and then to have the clarity that it's mirrored in the outline, in the outside that I'm always confronted and in communication with my pattern. Yesterday, there was this wonderful session, not just from the mind to know, I have to listen, I have just to listen, but to have it in the heart, in the sensation, to feel it, to feel the connection between wisdom, between knowing, and really feeling it and experiencing it. What happens if I just observe my pattern and don't do anything, just observe it. And then in that healing evolves. The healing which I was looking for, which I was just longing for. This was so beautiful yesterday when you said that my inner wish to heal myself and my soul and my topic. And I get such a sure feeling that I'm on a journey, that I'm on a path right now. I'm just stepping onto it and I'm so grateful to do that. And that what I do in practice, in my clinic, what I do on professional level, the human being sitting in front of me, I just listen, I just step back, take myself out of it, and that I carry this state into the world, and not only doing it in my clinic, but really with every person I meet, I communicate, and with every situ situation. I took so much out of it. It's not easy for me at all. I can't speak about easiness so far. But I got the feeling how to tell it. It's really it's so much of interest. It's a wonderful journey, which I can just give myself into. And I just wanted to say thank you. I will carry on with that. It's so exciting. I will also go for the next course because I think it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. It's really, really nice to hear. And uh, just for others to know that this vice course that we did this webinar will be available very soon as recordings and uh, you can just if you want information you write to my clinic which i just gave you the email id and whenever that uh, recordings are made available i can let you know